Welcome to episode 132 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my co-host, Warren Sklaris here. How are you doing, Warren? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, we're hanging in there. It's been a extremely busy week because we had like lots we of things yesterday. to talk about. We yeah, didn't talk like yesterday, we talked and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to welcome back to the show Ms. Kelly Gumont from the Mac Observer's Daily Observations Podcast. How are you doing, Kelly? Good, David. How are you? Doing great. Great. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. So we, I figure this would be a uh, great week to talk about uh, CES 2021 because uh, there was lots of things that were announced. So many things. And it was uh, just too exciting. And we all uh, had our views, and that's why we'll have we'll have three different views of what we saw this week uh, during the show. During the show this week, it was virtual, of course, which is even more interesting. We'll get into that. As well as we've got lots of news stories, tips, and apps as we have time here. So let's uh, let's just go jump right into the news this week. And first story I have is on Mac Rumors. Uh, Roku acquired rights to that wonderful service that really did really well, Quibi, the content, for less than $100 million. Uh, Roku reportedly paid less than $100 million, which cracks me up, to uh, to acquire the rights to Quibi's library of just high-quality original content into until 2022, Quibi was a very short form video subscription service, and I should say short lived, uh, that uh, mm-hmm. executives believe that would be would garner more than 7.4 million subscribers. Boy, that fell massively short for that reason. Uh, but uh, well, if we didn't live in the darkest timeline, it was distinct. It was a, a far <laughs> more realistic possibility yeah. when they launched at the end of February than it was by the time everybody got a hold of it at the end of March when everyone had to stay home because right. their whole point was like you're out and about and you're commuting and you're standing on the subway and you can watch like five minutes worth of a TV show and like on paper it sounded awesome until mm. nobody had commutes right COVID uh, but it's still- interesting go ahead. go ahead Ron sorry there was no real killer show um, right I mean, no. that was their problem too if they would have had like something that people were interested in at least one thing it might have but they didn't hook anybody well, into it. I, and they also I tried a few things. They didn't yeah. let anybody talk about it either. Like you couldn't take a screenshot of yeah. any of, of anything within the app. Um, initially, the video was only vertical. So you could only watch it on your phone. And nobody wanted to sit in front of a phone any more than they had to when they were home. Right. And right. Um, and there was a, a podcast. I remember reading a story about a podcast that was like, we are 100% here for this. All we want to do is talk about like, the new stuff we saw on Quibi and we want to talk about like the new shows that have been announced and da, 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 and Quibi shut them down was like you can't you can't talk about all of our stuff like that no what's and, the point <laughs> yeah so so yeah. there's been like like it seemed like every time they had an opportunity to maybe like turn things around they made a consciously confusing decision <laughs> But the, the app still works, thing. by the way. I still have the app on my phone. I should probably get rid of it. Yeah, I, delete, I, I deleted it. Um, he, but interesting thing is Roku, which is probably one of the biggest streaming media player in the United States, has a you know big library, forty thousand movies, TV shows, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess it will boost some some stuff on Roku uh, because it'll add you know more than seventy five shows and documentaries. So it's going to be interesting to see where Roku mm-hmm. goes with this because um, you know that you know they've got a lot of content. And I just bought, bought another. You know, of course, I have to have another streaming device because I have at least. 10 i'm so exaggerating but uh <laughs> so i bought bought the uh the, bought the roku um the roku extreme the not too terribly expensive i mean that, that's the cool thing about them they're cheap i mean you know 39 yeah. bucks or 25 bucks whatever it was um and they do have a pretty decent interface and i think they just want to add to their content and just c- continue to evolve yeah. with it so uh, so yeah. i think roku's uh probably gonna do good things with this but again like, like we said it's content is yeah <laughs> yeah all right Let's uh, move on. And the next story was um, Apple and Hyundai, the car manufacturer, um, hope to reach a deal for an Apple car uh, by March, which they say here. This was uh, on 9 to 5 Mac. uh, Mm -hmm. Hopefully doing a production in 2024. I find that hard to believe, but okay. Uh, More details emerged about Apple's alleged interest in working on a self-driving electric car in partnership with Hyundai Motor uh, Motor. Report from a local newspaper in Korea uh, today suggested that Hyundai and Apple plan to sign a partnership deal by March of this year. Again, this is all rumor. Uh, 
uh, that they, they they did confirm that there were talks with the Apple and Hyundai, the potential mm-hmm. deal. But uh, I think I think yeah, the Apple's definitely going to be uh, diving into this. That they really want to get into this market, um, and you know, with CarPlay and, and and getting into cars and expanding their horizons. So, uh, mm-hmm. Warren, what what do you think of this? I mean, it could mean anything. The partnership could be any, anything from just a part of the car to most of the car. Um, my initial thought was Hyundai, really. I mean, <laughs> out of all the car companies out there, um, I, I heard rumors more of a BM, BMW sounds to be like more of a thing because they, they have the thing now with the keyless car uh, right. uh, yeah. for the BMW. It's a better, you know, it's a kind of a better brand. Um, you know, just, I've never, I've, I've never had a good experience even renting Hyundai. So I, I don't like, car. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I owned a Hyundai. I owned a Hyundai Excel from like 30 years ago. So I, so it was, I was, when they fr- the first, when they first got into the U S market. So it was, in, yeah, so I've driven in one, I've driven in one. It had no floor. Like yeah, my feet were basically to touch the ground. And in fact, it was a it was a stick, and I had never ever driven stick before in my life. And I scared oh, the yeah. heck out of my I scared the heck out of my my buddy sitting in the back seat, and the, and the the salesman was like, "What are you doing?" And but I, I ended up learning stick, and I got to enjoy driving stick for a few years. So they, they what, 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 cars. <laughs> what'd you think? What'd you think, uh, Kelly? Well, I think I think there's a bunch that's interesting about this. Um, partly, like, um. I know Apple's not really a fan of relying on another manufacturer for a vital piece of their machinery. Um, right. You may want to look at the latest iteration of MacBook Pro for uh, what Apple does in those sorts of cases. Uh, no. Intel Who, I think, is what we call that. Um, so I, part of what's interesting in this to me is I wonder what it is they're trying to do. And I think, you know, sort of to, to Warren's point about uh, it being Hyundai, um, I wonder if maybe it's because um, they would have a little more sway with somebody like Hyundai than they would with somebody like Honda or like BMW, who's going to go, we know what we're doing. You need to back up. And maybe they would have a little more sway with somebody like Hyundai, who's not like one of the who's not like a top auto brand, particularly in the United States, because I assume that's where this is going to end up. But the thing that's interesting is, um, so Brian Chaffin over at Mac Observer has been an Apple car nerd, such (laughs) as that is, um, for many, many years. Like I've helped him prowl through LinkedIn, looking for people, you know, that used to work at an auto place that work at Apple now and different things. So like, you know, and we've been looking to see like what the hiring looks like and different stuff like that. And one of the things that he said the other day when we talked about this on Daily Observations that really struck me was um, if Apple's not making a car the way we think about cars now, if Apple is making a passenger delivery service, yeah. that's a very different thing. And in that case, like Apple can rewrite the rules for you know apple can make the rules for whatever that looks like if we haven't seen it already and so like him saying pass it, passenger delivery device was the part that made me that made me really stop and think about it again like maybe there is something to that that might be like that's a very different proposition than um i need a new car i can buy an audi i can buy a subaru i can buy a bmw i can buy an apple car like that's a very very different prospect then like i'm not necessarily interested in driving i'm interested in you know occasionally opening an app on my phone like you know lyft style like if 100 percent of your transportation comes from lyft like i need somebody right now to take me from here to there and then when i'm done there i'll need somebody to take me from their home and that's it like mm-hmm. that's a very different that's a very different business model that's a very different uh, proposition that's a very different experience as far as like how transportation operates at that point so i'm i'm interested in this after hearing brian's take on it um yeah so yeah. brian will be brian will be happy to hear that like he's got a convert um i don't know how realistic any of the timelines are because every time one of these rumors makes the rounds the timeline's different so right. i don't know anything about the timeline but i am sort of curious about how um like what the deal looks like if there's a deal to be had with Hyundai at all. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Definitely for sure. So uh, yeah. I, w- I would, I would have mentioned to say probably it's going to be towards the end of this, uh, end, end of this, uh, 
decade here. You know, I think it's going to be oh, like yeah. 20, 27, 28, you know, probably towards the end here. So definitely going to be interesting, but uh, uh, I still want CarPlay. But not I'm, anytime I'm really, soon. <laughs> no, I want CarPlay. That's all I care about right now. And my car doesn't yes. have CarPlay, so we need. I need yes. it. Yeah. Neither so is mine, but, it's, but my car self-drives. So. Yeah, but you're a Tesla, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I don't. My car is like mad. Every time I get a phone, the Bluetooth in my car is mad at it in a different way. And yeah. so, um, like every time I get a new phone, it's like, okay, how are you two not going to work together this time around? And yeah. I would rather just like, even if it's, you know, plugging in a cable, like when I get in the car, even just doing that would, you know, if I could do that and just let the car and the phone work themselves out, that would be perfection. I would yeah. be so happy. You know, CarPlay yeah. is, I'm jealous. I, I have CarPlay MV for sure. I do too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then a couple of stories that actually just got uh, released uh, today as uh, we're recording this. Um, uh, Netflix is reportedly testing spatial audio with the AirPods Pro and the AirPods Pro Max. Uh, mm-hmm. Netflix reportedly is quietly testing iOS 14's new spatial audio functionality, according to a report from iPhone Soft. Citing an anonymous Netflix developer, the company has been testing the spatial audio support on the iPhone iPad since December. So there's really not much else uh, you could say about this other than I think that uh, the fact that uh, Netflix is looking into this, I think this is pretty cool because um, to be able to hear it in spatial audio and go like this, oh, where am I? Um, to yeah. be able to do that. And um, uh, of course, for, for those of you who don't know what spatial audio is, it's an exclusive feature to AirPods, uh, AirPods Pro and the AirPods Pro Max. Uh, uh, and it can be toggled uh, in the control center and it uh, gives you an immersive experience. And believe me, it, it is very immersive. It, it's really cool. So, uh, Kai, what'd you think of this? I'm interested because it, it it's one of those things that sort of makes me realize that like other places care about audio quality as well. This is, um, yeah. that's part of what, what I'm interested in with this. Um, I saw, I, I saw so many people at CES, like my brain got full like Monday afternoon and just yeah, stayed there. Yeah. So, um, and I didn't even get to go like full on with it, but, um, I did talk to somebody who said that they were looking at spatial audio because there were game video games that were starting to right. come out with some spatial audio and that the audio quality, now that the video quality is stellar in a lot of video games, uh, like top tier titles all look beautiful. Then yeah. um, now, like now that the video quality is up there, like getting the audio quality up there is like the next thing that they're working on. And so, um, seeing spatial audio sort of become trendy like i'm interested in that because it means that it also means that they're doing a much better job of like mastering that audio making sure it's clear making sure it's audible making sure like if there's music but also someone talking or there's a lot of background that you could still hear the person talking you know in the middle of the show or whatever and i'm definitely interested in that because i kind of always want things to sound better so um i'm i'm looking forward to this becoming a thing that more companies are taking part in and i i hope that other places uh figure out um good ways to interact with spatial audio and that lots of people can have headphones that will do spatial audio for them and and just make the world a nicer audio place to be absolutely and then i didn't mention that apple tv plus hulu and disney plus already support the spatial audio so netflix is going to add to that uh, that collection Mm -hmm. here warren did you have any thoughts on this uh just as we were talking i um Got in the mail today an Oculus Quest. Oh, uh, yeah, good. Yeah, you can bring that up too. Yeah. But I mean, just if, and they have Netflix, um, and mm-hmm. it's compatible with uh, the AirPods. So I'm wondering, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, so spatial audio be, and, and, and being doing Oculus. Woo, you'd be yeah, happy. That would, that would be, be trippy. Neat. Yeah. So that's be, be, be quite uh, trippy. the only other thought I have about it is, uh, it is cool. I watched uh, a couple of the uh, nature shows on the Apple TV with it, and it's neat. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, like Planet Earth and. Yep. Um, um, all right, let's go on. Uh, another story just got uh, actually just announced within the last uh, hour. Was that well, about an hour or so ago? Um, Apple is planning to bring music and podcast app to the Microsoft Store. Well, of course we don't aren't, aren't a huge Microsoft fan here, right? But uh, I thought this was interesting. Uh, according to Nine to Five Mac, but this is a Mac rumors. Um, they are going to bring the music and podcast app to the Microsoft Store, according to reports, uh, citing oh. unnamed sources, of course. Uh, Apple is allegedly testing my music and podcast app in that platform in a private yeah. beta uh, for right now. No word yet as far as it's going to be compatible. 
uh, uh, it'll, it, when, when it'll be compatible for um, with Windows PCs, or uh, of mm-hmm. course they may, they may even consider adding it to the Xbox consoles. Um, but no, this is good because Apple is actually going to is expanding, uh, continues to expand, adding their apps to different platforms, whether it be a smart TV or, or in this case, the Microsoft Store. Microsoft Store is an interesting beast. You know, I, I work with it all the time for work, and um, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting to see how it goes. I know they had iTunes in there before, so so it's, this yeah. isn't anything new. So, um, what do you think, Kelly? I think the Xbox is the hook on this. Um, I think yeah. if if the Microsoft Store is the same, like the same store across all of their platforms, then uh, it's definitely um, it's definitely Xbox. I think like getting to listen to your podcast while you're doing other stuff on your Xbox, or whatever. Um, yeah. That feels like the sweet spot for this. Um, but I think it may also just be more recognition that a lot of people have an iPhone or an iPad and a work machine, like a work PC um, instead of a work Mac. Um, I mean, we see a lot of that in the enterprise, but there's, but there's still like, you know, it's still loads and loads and loads and loads of windows machines. Like that people use at work, uh, whether you have a Mac at home or not, but if it's your work machine, like to be able to sign in and listen to Apple music on your, on your work PC or listen to a podcast on your work PC, um, and then be able to pick it up on your phone later or on your iPad later or whatever. Um, I yep. think that I think that would have a lot of appeal. And I think the only thing that surprises me, it doesn't surprise me that they would do it. It surprises me that there was that there's enough appeal there for it to be a thing that they're doing. That, w- that yep. was really the only part that surprised me. Like, I know there's people out there that do it, but I didn't realize it would be enough for Apple to pay attention to and make a move like this. So that's yep. very interesting. Definitely interesting. Any, any thoughts on this one? I mean, they, I remember they moved iTunes um, yep. from the non from a uh, 64 bit uh, to the App Store. Ins- installer they, to App Store, yeah. They did the same thing with iCloud about a year ago. So the, the Wind- iCloud for Windows uh, was a yeah. downloadable thing. Now it's a uh, Microsoft App Store. Um, right. And they're pretty much just, you know, the same as they were with the 64 installer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, it, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is there's still a current iTunes out there. Um, for yeah. you know, for Windows, for Windows, and it's still it's it's not you know sunsetted yet. So yeah, you know, I think Apple doesn't like that. I think they they want people to forget the word iTunes uh, <laughs> permanently. Like so, yeah, sorry. yeah, well, what iTunes? There was never an yeah. iTunes. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> um. All right, and then the last uh, story, this was actually in Apple's newsroom, and I just want to just briefly mention this. I don't want to get into a major debate about this, but I thought this was just in, it's, it's important to, to, to at least talk about. Um, Apple had, uh, uh, Tim Cook had announced that there was going to be a big major announcement earlier this week uh, on CBS this morning, and then uh, this, 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 this is what this was. It was uh, Apple was launched uh, launching a major new racial equality and justice initiative project to challenge the systematic race, race, racism and advanced and race, racial equality uh, nationwide. They've committed to a $100 million pledge that includes its first-of-a-kind education hub um, at a, as in creating an Apple Developer Academy in Detroit, Michigan, which is, is really cool. And without getting into too much detail, I, th- I think this is a great thing that Apple's doing. They want they want to make sure that we're staying in a, a, a Promoting equality with everybody, and, and mm-hmm. we all should be equal, being able to do what we want to be able to do in this world. And um, I think this is this is a, just a great initiative that Apple has put into place uh, with uh, with this. And there's a full full uh, news release on this uh, on Apple's uh, newsroom site here. Yeah. Uh, but but I thought uh, oh, Kelly, can you give me a brief brief what you think about this? Um, I, I was for it because uh, this is a follow on to uh, I think it was last June that Apple said, uh, we're putting $100 million into the Racial Equality and Justice Initiative. That's totally a thing that's happening. And that was basically right. it, like at the time. And so this is just sort of the second phase of that announcement. This is what we're doing. This is where the money's going. This is what, like, this is the outcome we desire from having done these things. And the way they went about it, I thought was interesting because one of the things that they did was they gave money specifically to, like, VC firms that right. primarily, that primarily, um, uh, their investments go to uh, investing companies that are uh, that are more diverse, and that's 
awesome. And so the way that like it, this was like I really liked about this is that it wasn't just a banner on a website and it wasn't just Tim Cook released a statement or anything like that. It was right. this is what we, th- we said we were going to do this. And now this is what the implementation looks like. Check this out. Here's this thing. Here's this other thing, we, yep. you know, and we and here's here's the plan. And so I really liked that um, it was a follow up to to what they had already said that they were doing and what it looks like. And like the buildings look cool and. Uh, the opportunities that are going to be available that weren't available before, I think are going to be great. And I really look forward to what comes out of that because like more people yeah. with more ideas is going to always yeah. make, you know, the app store interesting. It's going to make better stuff for my phone, you know, yeah. like all that kind of stuff, like on sort of a selfish level, like I can't wait to see what <laughs> kind of creativity we get out of those because there sure. will be a new game. I can't stop playing or the new great app that helps me remember everything and get through the day or whatever. And, and it's going to be great. So yeah. I mean, I have a soft I mean, spot because of AppCamp. So right. like, yeah, this is very much yeah. a, like this is like something like this where like we're giving people an opportunity that they wouldn't have had otherwise is very dear, near and dear to my heart. So so yeah. seeing this also just made me happy in that way as well. Absolutely. Do you have any thoughts on this, Warren? Yeah, I mean, you can't say anything really you know, bad about it. It's a good thing. No, um, not at all. I mean, if, the, if there's <laughs> any bad thing about it and, and somebody on a podcast was talking about it today i forget which one but um they're they're concentrating on training you know underprivileged people um mm-hmm. a- apple coding apple development mostly right uh, that's what right. they're pushing yeah. and part of it is like you know there's other coding out there there's other pr- uh, platforms out there um that's mm-hmm. not just apple that could make money too um so apple has you know kind of a slight interest to to do this because you know you're going to make more people apple fans more into the ecosystem more people uh more more things available for it um it's just something to keep the the platform alive so um you know you could criticize a little bit that maybe they should just say you know we're we're teaching you know coding and development in general but they you know they kind of emphasize the apple part but other other than that i I, you know it's a good thing Uh, we saw the uh, mock-up of the buildings and they were really cool and Looks like it's going to be an amazing, yeah. amazing facility. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. happy about this. So. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be able to. Uh, one of the, there one, one of the programs. Was, <laughs> yeah. Go, one of the programs was like entrepreneurship, which isn't necessarily an Apple slant. And so there were some other like business classes and things like that, that they were talking about too, that they were, that were going to be part of the initiative. So like not all of it is just, we're going to make you um, Apple developers, which was the other part of it. I thought was kind of nice. Like I know that's what like the primary point of the center in Detroit is going to be, but some of the other stuff that they were doing wasn't necessarily even tech related. And that was another thing that I thought was really nice that they were doing. Right. So. I wouldn't come out and say, I want, you know, we're going to teach you uh, Apple development and Google coding, but you know, just, um, <laughs> yeah, just more like, you know, just, you know, that they're, they have, a, uh, they have an interest in, in doing this too, uh, because it, it's good yeah. for them in the long run. Um, but you know, they didn't have to do any of it. So it's, it's all good. Yeah. No, uh, all good. All good. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on to move on to topics this week. Uh, we always open up with beta beta. Uh, this week is uh, iOS 14, 14.4 beta two just got released. I believe it was just yesterday as we record. Um, and, uh, there are some notes, uh, here, uh, that, uh, they haven't really introduced much. Uh, one thing, uh, we've got some links to in the show notes to Mac, Mac rumors, some of the stuff they found. Uh, if it's paired with a home pod, the 14.4 beta will only be available in a limited number of testers, uh, that they, you'd be able to, uh, they've added some new, uh, home pod mini functionality that takes advantage of that U1 chip that's in the, in the, in the home pod mini. Uh, now they have vis- visual audio and haptic effects when songs are transferred from the home pod mini to, to an UI, U1 enabled iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 and when the okay. iphone is near uh, the home pod minios begin its soft haptic su- touch ri- rhythm that gets faster and faster as the iphone gets closer to the interface that's kind of cool so it's so actually when, okay. when the iphone gets closer to the home pod mini it'll start it, it, the rhythm will go faster and it'll get until the until tr- it fully transfers the song over i kind of like that 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 that's kind of that's nifty yeah yeah so they've added that, that. They have added that, and then um, the function. This functionality will also make handoff quicker and more reliable on HomePod MIDI and um, oh, in the tw- eleven or twelve as well. So this is this is good stuff. And then they said they also mentioned in the workout section of the of the Apple Watch app, the iPhone. On the iPhone, there's a uh, a new time to walk feature that includes a toggle to add newest workouts to watch. Hmm. 
So oh. the watch will have some of that stuff. Warren, you've already updated all your devices. I know that because you are the beta man. I um, was getting uh, I was getting nervous. It was like a month. <laughs> yeah, I was, we kept talking about it. It's like you, you're, I'm out, you're, out, you're back in your your beta withdrawal. <laughs> uh, well, you know, being on the same release as all the other uh, Yahoos out there makes me a little nervous. But um, but it all, you know, I, I, as I as I told you yesterday, I if 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 you told me I didn't put it on, I wouldn't know. It I see literally zero difference in in how it's responding. So um, that the thing uh, with the HomePod transfer is cool and. We said it before. Apple is trying to, and it's good. Apple, Apple wants you to be able to listen to something in your bedroom, walk downstairs uh, with your phone, and have that transfer all the way to uh, wherever it's downstairs, whatever's playing HomePods down there, and then into your car. It's it's it just follows you. So you know that's that's the future where you know for some yeah. reason whatever you listen to will follow you throughout life. So that that's what they're getting to right now. Yeah. And then uh, the other thing they, I did mention in here, too, is there's an update uh, since this article was uh, posted that it includes a new setting to specify a device type for a third-party Bluetooth-connected audio device so the headphone audio level measurements can be taken correctly. Uh, and then Apple tracks nice. headphone audio. Yeah, they track audio levels in the headphones to send alerts if music is playing at a level that is potentially damaging to someone's hearing. So if you go in, there's a screenshot in here. You go into uh, uh, into the headphone. In this case, it was a Sony headphone here. You go to the device type and you can set it, whether it's be a car stereo, a headphone, a hearing aid, a speaker, or other. So it was set to headphone and then now okay. it adjusts. So that's kind of neat uh, that they did that too. And then uh, the other thing too was there was a separate article that they said they will be introducing a warning on iPhones uh, uh, for that with with non-genuine cameras. Um, so that must mean like if someone has gone into uh, and done a repair of their iPhone and put used an aftermarket component rather than the genuine Apple uh, comp- uh, oh, component. Okay. So they always got to protect their, you know, that, that's, that's, so that's, that's sure. pretty typical. They did the same thing with the battery, right? Yeah. Wasn't, you know, they put a warning with the, with the uh, battery replacement. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's all repair stuff, but uh, Apple watch, I don't, didn't see too much. Do you see anything exciting on that? I don't think so. And then the TV OS, I don't think there was much either. Uh, but we got links in the show notes for both of those. So unless you had any other things that you saw about Warren. Nothing. Yeah. I'm just, I'm surprised uh, the, uh, the final release didn't come out this week. So it'll probably be next week for. Yeah. I, I I think it's gotta be close. I mean, it, yeah. it just seems, yeah. seems like it, they've been very slow with it. So, all right, let's uh, go ahead and move on. Let's talk about CES 2021. It was, uh, it was quite an interesting event, you know, from everybody. If everybody does recall that the, you, those of you who listen, you know, that, uh, in 2020 and CES, uh, 2020 was my very first virtual, not virtual, excuse me, the very, very first in person CES. So I had something to measure against, uh, for this year. Uh, so that was an absolute blast of what I did, what I experienced last year. So, um, so. This this is definitely a different experience, I must say. Um, and uh, the media events, uh, you know, there, there's always the two big media events that anybody's not aware of. It, if we're not in media, uh, that's Pepcom and Showstoppers, and um, that's uh, that that those both those events were awesome. I was very actually impressed to how they handled things virtually. Um, it, it, it they were a bit per- more personal in those events, so we could actually go and talk to people very easily. Um, uh, overall, I thought the show was good. I I, um, I was uh, impressed how how they pulled it off. Uh, Microsoft did a very good job keeping their infrastructure in place. They had uh, they had uh, Rich Demero and uh, Justine Zurek were the hosts of of the uh, the events that, that as people would uh, come to the the, the home page and gave you directions how to get and how to go to the, the page and how do you go and look at the videos and video quality was amazing. I mean, I I just already downloaded. Mm-hmm. They're letting us download all of the uh, all of the videos for the keynotes and such, and they're just really high quality so i was impressed with that as well um and uh uh it definitely was was some great stuff and uh, uh all three of us are gonna have some highlights of what we saw for this week i did a do a couple interviews but i'm saving them because i want to make sure you give give everybody uh, uh uh there was a lot to absorb this week and of course timing isn't exactly easy this week getting this stuff so next week i will have some great interviews and related to some of these ios products that i that i came across but uh you know kelly i'd love to hear your your, your, your take on it you guys have been covering it all this week on the mac observers uh, and the daily observations podcast and uh what yeah. what, what what's what stood out for you uh, as far as uh, uh, CES in, in general? Well, one thing was you. 
because uh, <laughs> you and I bumped into each other. In that, was, that was so funny. Conferences. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that was very to me. That was awesome because that's how yeah. CES works. You randomly bump into someone that you know at like you know at another booth. Oh hey, how's it going? So yeah. that was really to me. That was just more like that was funny, but it was like sort of a nice callback to what actual CES is like. Um, um, I really liked the opportunity kind of to, to get to talk to everybody that I wanted to talk to. Um, Mm -hmm. the thing that was missing this year from previous years is discovery, like randomly walking by a booth and going, that looks really cool. I should go, you know, I'm, I'm going to go investigate that. Um, other than that though, having everything, organized nicely and put together um you know here's like the list of the booths and you can go you can go here um the video quality on everything was pretty great um everybody that had the zoom meetings was really uh like was really on top of it um there were only a couple where um like it was it was either hard to see or hard to hear someone um but you know like you know and there's only so much you can do to mitigate that in, in some cases so um I really, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the variety of all the folks that I got to talk to and I enjoyed, um, uh, like what bits I was able to do, which was not a ton, you know, like I said, like I have a day job and so part of my day job is not CES. So it was kind of like where I could, you know, where I could fit things in. So it was nice to, uh, it was nice to, to get the opportunity to do it as opposed to, um, I would have had zero, CES exposure basically right. um, if it had not been online I would have just been home the whole time not doing anything um, and just having like Dave and John come on daily observations and tell me about all the stuff they saw in Vegas today so yeah. um, I did sort of appreciate that we kind of all had the same experience sort of like with WWDC how it kind of got democratized for everybody that got to go um, mm-hmm. but I, I thought uh, like it was as, I think it was basically as good as it could have been for not being in person because yeah. there's a lot Warren, of stuff you... I don't miss, like navigating traffic, um, yeah. accidentally double booking meetings, Ugh. trying to navigate through those uh, buses. The, the, <laughs> like all those buses, trying to navigate Ugh. like the crowd of chain smoking Asian men yeah. that all stand right outside yes. the convention center. Like Walk I don't right miss. Past them. <laughs> I don't miss any of that stuff. No, didn't uh, miss it at all. Like, but the other pieces of it, like that, were kind of fun. Like I do kind of miss that. But like I, I yeah. feel like I, it's definitely a fair trade this year. Yeah. Warren, did you get to experience anything? I know you just signed up for the first time at CES. I know you've never been to their, to the, uh, their, no, uh, I, in person, but I did you get to wife, experience anything this week? I asked or? my wife every year, uh, if, if, we, if I could go to the, the Vegas. She, I mean, she doesn't trust me alone in Vegas. So that's the problem. Um, <laughs> ah, but well, one, yeah, there's one day, one day. So, you know, we would go together, but then she's like, well, yes. I don't want to go because I don't want to go to CES and I want to go to Vegas. We love Vegas. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so for her, it'd be it. crazy, I think. <laughs> well, I mean, if that, yeah, I know. So, um, so I before the the thing started, you could go in and you could kind of pick out your agenda. Um, right. So I did that, and I, and I went through all the vendor lists because I was more excited about the vendors stuff than yeah, sure. the keynotes. I kind of found some of them boring, but um, and so I went through it. And the the problem I had is exactly what Kelly said: discoverability is very hard because. There's there was like maybe twenty vendors I knew of and the rest were like I didn't know, but I wanted to know more. And to figure out what they are about, you have to first of all, you couldn't even do it the first day. You couldn't even do it until the second day. You couldn't see what the, you couldn't click on links. So I couldn't even pre you know to do it, I would have to like research everything instead of just clicking on it to see what company yeah. they are. Mm-hmm. Um and then after, you know, Tuesday you could start clicking on it, but then you would have to click on everything one at a time, scroll down to see what the products are. I would have loved just to have like one web page that says, here's all the vendors and this is yeah. their, their yeah. product because, you know, you, th- their filter was not that good. It was basically, you know, whether it was, in the United States. I agree. It was hard for yeah. me to find things United I wanted. States, yeah. it, it was United States and then there was five, like five or six categories like healthcare, yeah. travel, things like that. So it wasn't really broken down. So I, I didn't like that. But, you know, I had no problems with the quality. I was... um you know, I did a lot of rewatching because I was busy this week. Which is, yeah, that's what's great about this. Yeah. You, yeah. you that's sign the other up. Nice there's thing ton, about it. tons of on demand, and you can go back and watch for the next thirty days. It. So yeah, yeah. and so. you can download and you can download them too. So if you want to copy it, which I've done a, a bunch of those. So but like, yeah. uh, but no, like Kelly, I, well, like Kelly said too. I mean, I 
I prefer getting the the gist of it from uh, like Dave and John uh, more than probably going through the whole thing because yeah. um, for us, I mean, they know what we really are into, um, and mm-hmm. you know, some of the products that you guys didn't talk to, I'm into like the ice cream maker. That's a big one. I think I want to get. <laughs> um, and uh, other than that, a couple, you know, maybe some ports and plugs, but there was nothing really huge for for yeah. Apple. I don't think. So I, I added a list of stuff here on our in our show notes of the things that caught my eye. And, Kelly, if you have anything you can think of, uh, after I go, go through a couple of these, uh, you can you know, feel free to add yours in. Um, the first one was uh, the Satachi uh, had come out and launched a, a Dock 5 multi-device charging station, which actually is uh, uh, similar to the Scotia uh, product, too. Um, yeah. This dock is actually going to be able to charge up to five devices at once, including your AirPods. So the, the picture that's here, this is in Mac Rumors here. Uh, we've got two yeah. iPads, two iPhones, and and, and an AirPods uh, Pro here that's wirelessly charging and all plugged in. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And it's got Qi charging uh, that, that can only goes up to 10 watts on that 20 watts are is is these usb c ports and it's got two 12 watt uh, usb uh, a ports um so it and, and they say it's ideal for workspaces kitchen countertops nightstands i don't know i don't know if i don't want that on my nightstand but i don't want that on my nightstand but like <laughs> that's, on the, that's a lot of devices on a nightstand um so on the end of the counter it, maybe like you know yeah. you got something in the in the kitchen or or something like that um so techie always makes interesting stuff. That's that's yeah. so whatever they have to announce, I'm always kind of interested. I think they had some keyboards yeah, I like them. this year yeah. as well um, that were like backlit and cool looking. Um, so th- those were awesome. And like they were they were one of the companies I was curious to see what they were going to actually announce because I had seen that they had something that they were putting out at CES. And I was interested to, to find out what that was ultimately going to be because like I've bought Sateki stuff Um as a person who reviews a lot of gear, I feel like that's a pretty good sign is that I will go buy one. Like if it like and I've bought them for other people, like I feel like that's, a, that's I mean, whatever you think of my opinion yeah. about it, like that's a sign of approval. Like if I have to go spend money on one, there's a few brands that I will buy. And Sateki is one of those. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, so Aki, this thing looks those- Sateki, yeah, Sateki, Aki, Aki Anchor. and Anchor. Anchor, yeah. Those are my top three. Yeah, that's that's where I would... Yeah, I need a, a this. Uh, which one of those companies makes one? Okay, right. I'll get that one. Yeah. So this uh, <laughs> priced at uh, $59.99, which actually is not too terribly expensive because the Scotch, the Scotch one I have is, was it was expensive. It was like $130. Yeah. That, Do you um, have that like so. Lego one from Scotch? Like you buy the little pieces mm-hmm. and assemble mm-hmm. your, your supercharger? Yep. Yeah, I have it, it up there now. So I bought cool. it right there. <laughs> yeah, I bought I bought it last year. Um, it, it's uh, I, they have now a black one, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I bought one just like this. And I like it because you can take it apart, and then if you only want the phone, mm-hmm. you, you want the phone charger and the um, and yeah. the watch charger. That's all you need, and you cap it off, and it you're looks, done. Uh, yeah, so I've I've yeah, been actually looks very super happy with nifty. that. Yeah, I've been very happy yeah. with that. So, um, then the other one was a. Uh, in fact, I we we do have a scotch here, and uh, is, a, is a, was a really interesting one. This is made by a company called Binatone. Um, it's called the uh, Mask Phone, and what this does is it actually is an optical face mask that has filtration. It's got N95, so obviously with this day and age, everybody wearing masks because of COVID. Uh, really great thing, but it also has a built-in. Bluetooth, so you actually can make phone calls while you have your mask on, stay protected, so you don't have to take it off. And uh, mm-hmm. I thought this was really cool. I know uh, John, John F. Braun, and, and you guys re- reviewed it today on the, the Mac Observer's uh, Daily Observation Podcast. Uh, but yeah. it, this is uh, this is very cool. Uh, combines health and entertainment, so it's going to allow you to be able to. Uh, one of its first, this is one of the first of this kind that I even knew about. And mm-hmm. I saw these guys at Pepcom. That's where they were. And um, yeah. uh, built-in microphone, very fashionable. It's got the filtration system, so it's it's all it's, it's all out. And the pricing is not bad. It's only fifty dollars, forty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So, is this something you would like, Roran? You like to get a, to get the mask like this? Well, let me tell you um, about the mask. So I work in a uh, retirement communities, so a bunch of them. Right. So we're always masking up. Uh, and we have to. Um, Mm-hmm. But I'm also I'm the IT guy there, so I'm always you know either listening to a podcast or on a phone call. So the thing is, with if I have my AirPods in uh, in while I'm working, everybody's like, "Are you on the phone?" You're, you know, they don't want to talk to you because they they, they think you're not listening to them because you're on the phone. So to alleviate yeah. that, I got a pair of these uh the tight uh, the shock waves uh, the mm-hmm. the things that go underneath here. Oh, air, uh, air shock. 
Oh, they're shots. Yeah, aftershocks. Yeah, yes, I know the ones so, you mean. Yeah. So those work really well too, and they don't know that you're on the phone because there's nothing in your ears, except <laughs> except now that when you wear a mask, the way that they go onto your ears, the mask gets tangled up with the uh, with the, yeah. the, 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 the the thing. So it's, it's terrible. This is the answer. This yes. is the answer. So I'm going to definitely get these when they come out. Yeah, Excellent. I think that for the price, fifty bucks, can't beat it. Did they yeah, give yeah. a did, did they give a timeline on this? It's available now. What? What? Okay. Yeah, the links in the show notes. Yeah, I'm ordering, you can add it to your cart and buy it through PayPal. I'm ordering. You can even right get now. four 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 interest free payments of twelve dollars and fifty cents if you so choose. That's cool. Hey. <laughs> but I might uh, get two. I don't know. So yeah, check that out. Go ahead. I was curious if it, I asked John about this and he wasn't sure on the show. Um, what yeah. I wanted from it was for it to work sort of as a microphone, because I know a lot of people who don't necessarily project have a very kind of a quiet voice. And mm-hmm. when you add a mask to that, like not only can I not hear you, but I can't see that your mouth is moving and like catch right. some of it anyway. And like be able to, Oh wait, you're talking to me. I should like, I need to really concentrate and like see as well as hear you so that I can catch the stuff that doesn't make it all the way to my ears. And I would really like that out of a mask. So if this does that too, then Warren, yeah. uh, uh, put one in the cart for me. <laughs> I, would, I would love it. I would love that to sounds it. phenomenal. But well, the Bluetooth, like the, the Bluetooth phone thing, like I think that that's one of those things that we saw um, this yeah. year that very much was, was I, I felt very much like it was a 2020 product. Like we wouldn't have seen it if it hadn't been for 2020. Yeah. So yeah, well, but I'm really glad it exists. It's super helpful. So I'm just I just hit the uh, uh, the order and it's uh it's on its way. Excellent. So, right, you don't even waste any time, do you? We'll we'll get we'll get we'll we'll, we'll anxiously hear, wait to hear your review of it. <laughs> yeah. Hello uh, and welcome comes. to spending Warren's money on yes <laughs> on um, iOS. Thing. No, you got to uh, review the, review the ice cream maker. Review the ice cream maker. Come on, let's do it. So the footnote is that occasionally we will get a, a, a food a food and drink related pitch in the PR inbox at the yep. Mac Observer. So um, we got like one every day for like three days, like just before Christmas last year. And so uh, I, I said to Dave Hamilton, I was like, OK, if we keep getting these, uh, Andrew and I have decided we want to start the Snack Observer. <laughs> and so when we start the Snack Observer, we will totally review the ice cream machine more. Do that, right. and then so, somebody else keeps talking about the uh, this oven. It's like a microwave. It's, not, it's like an air fryer oven system that they send you, and they get, get meals with it. That's yeah. the other one. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, sure. yeah, I saw yeah, that. I that was interesting. Yeah, yeah, that might be something. Um, I don't remember either, I, but like you put in the cartridge, and like, like scan, and a meal comes out later or something. Well, they send yeah. you the they send you the meals, and you scan it, and you scan, and it knows what it is. And then the so. oven knows what to do from the QR code on the package, and exactly. you put it in the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's a, that's the future right there. Yeah. So uh, next thing I that caught my eye too, this these folks reached out to me. Um, this is a, a com- company called Owl Home, and what it is is this is a um, this is a all-in-one smoke, carbon monoxide, motion, noise, temperature, humidity detector, all built in one device uh, with a built-in alarm. And it does mount to your ceiling. It's wireless. It, it, it mounts right up to your ceiling. And and I thought the neat thing was the fact that it works. It's it's integrated to um, uh, to your iPhone, so you have full access. And 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 it, it anything it's monitoring, it's actually going to tell you uh, on the app that's on your iPhone. It's got a built-in security system, built-in siren. Uh, very easy to install. It's just basically mountain and, and you go and away you go. Um, you a lot of ultimate control with it using, using it, a lot of smart sensors, full home kit support, which I know Kelly, you like that. Um, and even, even works with Google home, the a lady. And, uh, uh, if that's that, if this, then that, uh, and I would hope it works with uh, the S lady as well. Um, it still, still hasn't been released as of yet. Um, they, they offered to get me a review unit. So I said, sure, I'd be happy to review it for you, but it will probably won't be told towards the It'll end be a of while. this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think the cost wasn't, I don't know if they put the cost in here. Um, it wasn't too terribly ex- uh, expensive. Let's see. If I click pre-order uh, what, now, it'll probably tell me. 139, it, it says. Yeah, one, yeah. yeah, 139. Yeah, it says it's going to be va- available in October of this year. Yeah. So, um, And a $10 black tax. Uh, oh, if you want the black one, right? Yeah, the black one <laughs> is black $10 or more. White. Yeah. yeah. So, so, wait, so, so it's, it's home compatible, so you could do routine. So if it detects smoke, you could have it play 
this house is on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and like flash bright lights. We haven't started and, the and, fire. <laughs> yeah, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> yeah. So. Kelly, good, why good, is good. the basement playing the Bloodhound Gang? Oh, yeah. oh okay. something's so, on fire. That's a carbon. Good, <laughs> that's that's a carbon monoxide. You got to get out. Yeah, it's time to go. It was, a, it was a good, it was a good, uh, good home kit item. So I, I, I'd be a, yeah. interested to look at that. So I'm and then, glad uh, they're doing it like all in one kind of, cause it does the, yeah. the smoke and the carbon monoxide. Like and that. there was, I think it did something else too, or maybe I'm confusing it with another home sensor device, but it's nice to see the two in one stuff, especially like as smoke detectors kind of age out and then being able to get combination devices and get combination devices that will, will tell your phone, you know, and that sort of thing. Right. Cause it's really nice to, I know we're home a lot more now, but sometimes we might not be home. And when we're not home, it would be nice to know what's going on when we're home. So this have, is a good way yeah. to do that. I have another question. This is more serious, but it's not. But if the, if you're cooking and it's, and it goes off, can you say, "Hey, Essie, can stop it"? Because that would be a feature that Maybe. I would buy it if it did that. Yeah, Maybe. that'd be interesting. Because otherwise, you have to do this with the you know, with the sheets. Yeah. So if you could say, yeah. "Hey, S, well, turn off S that lady. smoke alarm." Yeah. I used to have a device called a Leo. Uh, they are now defunct, and I'm very sad. Um, that would listen to stuff in your house, and it would tell mm. you, uh, "This is what I like." And then it would, it you could set up like what sort of notification system you wanted. So it would call you. It would make a phone call and say, "Hi, this was just recorded in your house," and then they All would right. just play for you what it was hearing, the noise. and yeah. then it would go, "Is this legit?" And you like push one if like, yes, this is legit. I'm going to go resolve it. Or two is like, but not re like, I know what yeah. you heard, but that's not what you heard. And then right. like, and that also helped like train it. So um, I thought it was really, it was a really, really nice idea. I was so sad that, that, that they're gone. Um, Cause it was great. Uh, Amazon's so. Amazon has its uh, guard. It's called Amazon home guard or something like that. Which yeah. listens for glass breaking and listens for a couple of different noises and it will, yeah. You if, if you hear something like that yeah but, um yeah i you yeah, know the, the home stuff is great i got a one of the faucets now where i, I could tell the uh alexa oh to, uh, yeah fill up the cup of water or stop or start but yeah it's all yeah. it's all good but uh, we could we could go on for hours. There's so many products that, uh, but I, <laughs> yeah. I tried to try to trim this down to as many that would catch the eyes of folks that like their iOS. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, next one I wanted to talk about real briefly is the uh, the Kensington. Kensington came out with a studio dock, which combines an iPad Pro docking station with uh, the with iPhone and AirPods chargers, um, and it actually got the CES 2021 in Innovation Award. Um, so it's it greatly expands your iPad Pro's connectivity option with three USB a ports one usb c port and an hdmi 2.0 port with a and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because everybody still needs one of those right and then plus has the sd card reader a gigabit ethernet port the whole setup is all powered by a 20 volt dc power adapter uh, wow. the 11 inch um, uh, ipad pro and the 12 inch 12.9 inch ipad pro and the 10.9 inch uh, ipad air models will work and they'll magnetically attach to this device because they're all three of those of course are usb c um and looks really great it's it it, it does uh it does um uh rotate for both portrait and landscape modes kensington has not revealed the price of this sucker yet so you, you can sign up on their website to receive updates so i'd be interested mm -hmm. to see what this costs i would venture to say I, this is about 150 bucks at least it's got a lot um, of aluminum i could see this is a, so, this is a 200 yeah. yeah. situation i think yeah 200 bucks yeah easily yeah, it's going to be pricey. So yeah. check that out that the Mac rumors put that information on there for us. And that's, there was announced at CES. Um, two Belkin items I wanted to talk about. And then I have one other item uh, that's new for, for uh, hearing mm -hmm. impaired. The first uh, Belkin item is, uh, of course, they've already got a three in one device that will charge the, your Apple watch, your, your iPhone and um, your AirPods pro. This one was interesting. If you don't have an Apple watch, this is just a simple two in one wireless charger stand. It's mag mm -hmm. safe. Of course, that, that, uh, will also charge uh, the AirPods Pro, and it's got a little little uh, shallow indentation on the base that allows you to be able to just set it down and and charge those two items. And you know, mm -hmm. this might be nice if it's sitting on desk uh, on your nightstand or, or wherever. And yeah. not a bad little charger. It's Belkin, and Belkin's uh, has partnered with Apple, so they're selling a lot of these products at at the Apple Store yeah. online at stores. 
Uh, cool little device. It plugs right in in $99.99, and uh, it's coming soon. It hasn't come out just yet, and they'll, you can go on their website. i got a link there to, to notify you about that. And then um, they also came out with a new uh, AirPods, Air, AirBuds um, that uh, will compete with the AirPods Pro, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, this was, uh, uh, of course, my link didn't want to open here. Let's, let's see if it <laughs> led me. Um, I just clicked it and it, it didn't. Oh, part- yeah. It, the sound form, it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we go. Uh, and uh, these are true wireless uh, air, earbuds. They're, they're, they're brand new. With, uh, uh, Duncan just announced them at CES. Again, this hasn't come out just yet. Pricing is going to be around $99, mm-hmm. $99.99. Um, it's going to have uh, uh, advanced environmental noise cancellation. And we talked about this. You know, There's so many noise cancellation options out there. Um, yeah. that it's going to be It's really interesting with these, <laughs> with these uh, earbuds. But uh, one thing that is interesting, which is unique, of course, it charges with Qi charging. But also what's unique about these, this does have the Find My integration. I do, you haven't. I haven't seen a third-party uh, ear, uh, earphone or headphone, for that matter, that yeah. has uh, Find My as a as an availability for for that, as either. well as its water resistance. So I thought this that, that's kind of what stood out me wanted to talk about mentioning these products yeah. uh, through Belkin. So that's the thing and, that I've noticed is the the noise cancellation has adjusted a lot. Um, like. Lot, it used to be that there weren't a lot of true wireless headphones that had it. Now, and not only do a number of them have it, but some of them are also allowing you to adjust. Like, I want a little bit of background noise, or I want, you know, like Apple's AirPods Pro is a binary system. Like, I can hear everything outside right. of my headphones, or I cannot. And there are other ones now that have like an app that you install that lets you adjust levels, and that's interesting. So, it's been kind of fun to watch the evolution of some of these go out. And again, it's just people paying more attention to audio, and I will never be mad about that. No, nope, yeah, not at all. It's, and it, a lot of it's with the speakers now, because you on the uh, uh, not the microphones, uh, you could mm-hmm. add extra microphones to pick up the ambient noise to pump into your ears if you need to. So that's, yeah. I think that's a thing that Apple, at least, I, I never heard of the technology before Apple did it. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. And the Find My is very interesting in those. Um, I know a lot of people who would be very interested in having Find My headphones. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. And um, other product I found interesting, this was at the uh, at Pepcom's experience that <laughs> so we we saw, is uh, a company called uh, Nupool. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and um, it's an, a breakthrough audio device uh, that they came out with for, for the hearing impaired. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it is a... It's it's going to be a device that plugs to the bottom of the, of your iPhone using the 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 lightning uh, adapter, and it allows you to be able to plug this in and actually be able to help you be able to hear uh, uh, all the sounds around you. Because sometimes it, it gets very loud, you may not be able to hear somebody as they speak. Um, this is this is a it was it was a pretty innovative product here. Um, I it just it 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 was debuted at, at CES, and I don't know yet as far as when uh, it's going to get released. Well, they, they have a link here. I don't know if you t- t- had taken a look at this at all, um, uh, Kelly. Uh, but it yeah. was basically very simple, you know, giving you some crisp audio, auditory focus and being able to do a much easier yeah. to hear things. Um, Chuck was interested in it over on Mac Voices Live. We talked about it yeah. a little bit. We and, talked about it. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of it because I think that there's probably um, a lot of people who kind of fall in that valley between I can hear just fine and I could really use a hearing aid and maybe they just need a little bit of help. It's sort of like um, the reading glasses you can buy like at Walgreens yeah. or whatever, like like a lightweight, like I, I need a little bit of help, but I don't need a ton of help. And so I'm going to put these on and like, you know, they're $10 at the store or whatever. And it's like a commodity sort of an item and not like a an actual assistance device, like actual glasses or actual contacts would be. And I feel right. like this is that for, for hearing aids. And, and I'm really interested to see uh, where it goes. And I hope it ends up being really popular because um, at some point we're going to get to go out again. There's going to be a lot of background noise in restaurants and stuff. And it seems like that's the kind of thing where this would really shine is I'm at a restaurant or I'm at a bar and it's like, there's a lot of background noise and maybe my voice is kind of quiet and you have, I mean, not mine, but <laughs> but maybe, <laughs> maybe you have a hard time hearing someone who is not me, um, yeah. you know, sitting at a restaurant or whatever, or they have a hard time hearing you because of all the background noise and, and it, it makes it really hard to track that conversation. And so something yep. like this could really help folks. And I like anything that will help make somebody's life better in a particular way is usually something that I'm 100% for. And this is just another yep. item on that list. Absolutely. 
And then uh, one last item I had on here uh, before we get close to the end here. Um, Scotia here de- debuted a new car mount that's compatible with Apple's MagSafe charger, which I thought was great. Uh, they, they announced the launch of a new range of vehicle mounts that will be designed to work f- with the MagSafe wireless charger. Uh, these mounts are not standalone, and they've been created as mounting enclosures to allow the MagSafe charger to be used in the car, which is pretty cool. Um, and a different range of mounts. And you know, Scotia makes some great, great car mounts. I'm I love very Scotch. impressed with the uh, Scotia. Yeah. I, I always say Scotia or Scotia. I always say Scotia. They, uh, um, and, I've been a fan of theirs since they made gear for my fifth gen iPod. So, yeah. like, I, Scotia and I go way, way back. <laughs> and, yeah. like, I've had cables and stuff from them. Uh, they're another one that's a company that I will buy stuff from. They don't, they don't have quite as wide a variety of things. Um, as some of the other brands that we mentioned earlier. But um, if there's a Scosche one, um, I will generally check it out. They also had something they announced this week that was one of the things I thought was interesting, um, which is basically a HEPA filter that fits in the cup holder of your car. Yeah. And so that looks really nifty for, for air purifying and stuff for, for a bunch of reasons. And like their video about it was very cute. I did get a kick out of it. Um, but it's, it, it seems like a very nice thing, particularly like if you are a ride share driver, if that's, if that's your hustle right now, like yep. this would be a really nice way to kind of maintain, or if you're doing like a lot of Instacart stuff and you end up with like a lot of weird things in your car and that kind of thing, then it can be helpful. So, um, uh, yeah, the, I did spend a fair amount of time talking to the Scosh guys this year. They, they yeah. were, they, they had some, they had some other interesting stuff. And one of the things I always like about their approach is it always feels like somebody who actually uses this stuff is the person who went, you know, what would be awesome would be if this thing that goes in the lighter of your car had two ports or was super compact or had enough power or was USB C like, you know, like the stuff that they're doing now, like, a lot of the stuff that they design, it's always it, it always very much feels like somebody actually used this and went, you know what would make this awesome is if yeah. we did that and then they go do that and then it's better. Absolutely. And then so they're, they're going to – go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, well, you, uh, well, I'll tell you what I think about it when you're done. Or no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, well, I just want to say um, at first I was – worried about these because I, you know if you read some of the comments it says the same thing but like uh, if you hit a bump you got a problem because the phone's going to fall down um so two things it's, it locks you into the magsafe environment if you get one of these so you mm-hmm. cannot use uh even cases that say they're compatible with magsafe i've noticed if it's not a real one oh it, it'll, it will fall off because i've started playing with it too i got a, a cheap knockoff. that's good to know yeah, so I got something off Amazon, which looks like this uh, thing. These are uh, kind of um, car mounts, but a lot yeah. cheaper. I had to crazy glue it back together and fell apart. But, <laughs> but what I found out is uh, with the MagSafe uh, case and these uh, and these type of uh, holders, it it holds pretty well. So okay. um, that's good to know. But you do have to buy real MagSafe cases for it to, sure. to really hold. Otherwise, it ends up on the floor. And ends up on the floor and it cracked my uh, it cracked my uh, my protector. Oh, oh, oh so no! I had to get a new protector for the first time in a while. So as long as it's not the phone. <laughs> <laughs> David and I are here over here going ah. Not, not your well, phone. That was the no. long that that dramatic pause was too dramatic, Warren. And my heart can't take that. Well, it was a really nice protector, and uh, you know, I, 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 I yeah. kind of miss it. I didn't want to have to spend the other five bucks to get the new one from Amazon. So. <laughs> Well, you so, buy the anchor one, and then they send you two at a time. Oh, this was mm-hmm. uh, uh, actually funny story. I bought a three pack. It came today. The first two uh, did not go on right, so I'm like, this one has to do it. Oh, I no. got it on. I got it on perfectly, except there was a little piece of dust in there, so I tried to get it off and I ruined it. So now I ordered a couple more. So uh, <laughs> yeah, get the anchor terrible. ones. They're awesome. And this is all because so, my phone fell off. A MagSafe uh, charger. A MagSafe. A MagSafe. Charger. I hope I'm yeah. pronouncing those air quotes correctly. Safe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, this the Scotch, uh, uh, adapter does come with a 20 uh, watt USB uh, power delivery car adapter. 
that will be enough power to charge the iPhone 12 or a 15 watt uh, for the iPhone 12 mini. And then they also said there was going to be some um, magic mounts that uh, options that will be available, including a window dash mount, a cup holder mount, and a four in one kit that will include a swing arm dash. So they, it's gorgeous because it does, does really does some unique yeah. stuff. A lot of that this stuff in- that won't be available until uh, later in the spring here. So, but, yeah, uh, but this is an ecosystem that they're going through. They're, they're uh, going for with this is, is all kinds of stuff. Cause they'll have like the home equivalent so that you can put it on a stand at home that, it, you know, a max, you know, magnet it to a little, you know, elevated stand on the uh, end of the counter and it'll charge there too. And all kinds of stuff. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let's move off of CES. I've got a couple, I got a tip and then we've got a couple of app picks and then we'll wrap things up here. Um, this has been driving me absolutely crazy. So I was on a seek and, and, and a seek how to fix this. And believe it or not, I have a CNBC article that I've linked to, which is, it's just kind of unique here. Uh, you don't get to, do, to use them as a tech resource here too often. So, <laughs> um, how to stop your AirPods from automatically connecting to your other Apple devices. It drives me absolutely crazy. I sit here and I'm connecting my AirPods Pro to my Mac. And then if I go pick up my iPhone, it's going to start connecting. Then I've had, it happened to me two, a couple weeks ago and Chuck's on the show. I was like, my headphones are on. I can't figure it out. I'm, like, I'm sure Warren can remember that because we, I had to do some edits here. So, so I, I, that, I ultimately ended up what, what was what happened here. But, um, you know, if you're sitting and listening to music and, and all of a sudden you get close to your iPhone and all, all of a sudden it's going to, oh, yeah. there's your iPhone. Let me switch. So I think the, I like the old method ba- uh, better. So what you do is when the when the iPhone is, is connected to your AirPods Pro, you go into the settings, uh, into that. You go into Bluetooth. You, you look for your AirPods Pro. You click the I. And then you can scroll down and you go. What you do is you go to where it says connect to this iPhone. And you have two choices, automatically or when the last connect. Uh, to this iPhone. So if you check that off, it will stop asking. So a, a good tip here. And it's got it's got all the steps in this article. So check that out if you don't want it automatically connecting. Luckily, I don't have my iPad. My iPad uh, I probably should go take a look at that one, too, is it probably would do the same thing if I, I was near it yeah. th- that quickly. So you could do it on the Mac, too. I'm looking to, to on the Mac. Have, yeah, the Mac can do have, it as well. Yeah. So yeah. you have, actually have to go under Bluetooth, uh, which you don't yeah. n- right. normally do right. on the yeah. Mac. You usually go through audio. But yeah, it's there, too. So, yeah. all right. We got uh, two, two quick things on apps here. Uh, last week, I talked about this app, the remote app. If, uh, if you remember, we we talked about this this remote app that uh, that actually uh, lets you uh, connect your TV uh, to to this app and allows you to be able to control the TV. Well, oh, yeah. I found out I found out the hard way it doesn't work with older TVs, and I in fact tweeted the um, uh, the the develop the app developer, and he says, "Oh, sorry, yeah, because my." I, I didn't realize my TVs are this old. I, I, I probably shouldn't even say that it is, but I have a 65 inch uh, HD uh, Samsung nice curved TV. I'm very happy with it. And it's got an absolutely gorgeous picture, but it was made in 2016. So it's <gasps> five years old. Can you believe it? But I'm not. I'm not buying a new TV, but trust me, I want. I, I, it's a beautiful TV. Not, so not for the, uh, not for the, app. not, not, not to get this app to work. So just <laughs> yeah. be aware pe- people, if you have so, a, 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 the, any of the Samsung and any of these other TVs, the developer did confirm that, uh, that so, it, it, it doesn't work. So, so is it because your TV's five years old? Like how old a TV should you worry about? Well, he said older than two years. So okay. if it's, if it's, uh, if it's two years so or older, if you then, don't remember buying your TV, this may not work for you. <laughs> I couldn't even remember. Yeah, I couldn't even remember. So, um, yeah. so, uh, so that, that just, just be aware of that. So, um, and then the other app I wanted to mention real quick is this actually was an article in nine to five Mac and I went uh, and I did start just playing around with this a little bit. This is a, uh, this is an app called denim and it's, uh, it allows you to create stunning cover artwork for your playlists. So if you're the one, if you're a type of person that likes to uh, create playlists and, and you want to have a, a, your own kind of cool cover art that, you don't have to use uh, all the cover art that comes with the songs. Well, oh, this no. app will probably be for you. So what it does is allows you to actually go through and, um, and it, it gives you um, uh, uh, options to be able to create artwork, put it in your playlist, make it look pretty and fancy. And uh, it, it does work really, really, really well. Um, it, there is a free oh, no. version of it on the app store, but, but you do need to pay a whopping $1.99 in an in-app purchase to unlock all of the artwork styles. So you can get really, fun and customize this app uh, oh no and it's called, are you going to be doing it <laughs> yeah like, i'm the person who bought the the blank cds that look like records right so that i could make mixtapes on them 
even though they're those. not cassettes anymore. Ver, yeah, ver, verbatim. We, <laughs> we should make mixtapes and send them to each other. It'll be fun. It'll be old yeah. school. Um, yeah, sometimes old, sometimes the old ways are best. Um, yeah, this definitely sounds like something I would like because I have I have uploaded custom like a custom image for something yeah. for a playlist every so often. So yeah, um, this is definitely something for me, especially because like, and what, what did me in was looking at the screenshots and one of them is the cassette with the Sharpie label yep. upon it. And I'm like, I, no, I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm done. That's it. There it is. I'm done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I had so, my little fake record label, you know, from so-and-so records that I would like give people yeah. mixtapes from there and like, you know, artwork down the side and yeah. Yeah. Mixtapes so, were totally my jam. So this is definitely up my alley. This something you would do, Warren? Um, I, I did what Kelly did with the, the tapes and the, uh, and the Sharpie, yeah. but uh, those days are over. I, I just right. basically don't even look at my <laughs> phone anymore. Um <laughs> But the artwork's cool. I usually we talked about it before. I usually if I'm looking at the phone, I'm going to go to the lyrics instead of looking at yeah. the album mark. So yeah, All right. Nice. All right. Wow, that was a lot of stuff we going through. This this hour just flew by here. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, wrap things time. up for this show. It was a long time, but uh, we had a lot of fun here. And uh, let's go ahead and wrap up. This is that was a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, just go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Kelly, thank you so much for coming back to the show. We really love having you. Please tell everybody where we can find you. Are you going to make me do it in 10 seconds? No. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, you can find me five days a week hosting the Mac Observer Daily Observations podcast over at themacobserver.com. Uh, you can find me uh, on my own podcast called The After Show with Mike and Kelly. Uh, where my friend Mike and I have a podcast together, which is usually just um, sort of the two of us catching up because we're not very good at doing it regularly. So you will kind of hear us tell each other what we've been up to lately. Um, you can find that at aftershowpodcast.com. And you can also find me over at the Incomparable Podcast Network, where I am usually talking about Star Wars, but not always. You can, right. oh, and you can find me on Twitter as Verso. If you don't, yeah, if, if you can't get enough of, of, of what I have to say, you can go to Twitter where I'm Verso, and you can get way more of it there. Yes, you can. And uh, Warren, any was there anything exciting uh, happening uh, on Mac to the Future this past week? Uh, same stuff, but uh, <laughs> thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly, for showing up. It, it was uh, it's fun having you. So that's well, you know, don't worry about me. But you know, it was glad to have you. <laughs> it was good to have you. He, he, he does it to me every week. He, don't worry about me. We, uh, the, 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 save yourself, he says. No, nobody yeah. wants to fight. No, nobody's looking for me. Nobody wants to ask me anything. If no. you want to come, we, if if you like Facebook, come to the Mac to the Future page because it's actually yes. fun. So it, it's not it's not I like the, it's not like most of Facebook. I spend most of my time there because. It it's, gets away from everything else. It, it's a, it, it, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be Max of the Future without you having your one line responses to everybody's co comments. So, because <laughs> if I look at my personal timeline and I look at what my friends are posting, and it's like political and stupid, and I don't want to get yeah. into it, I just stay away from it and I talk to people about Apple. So that's well, much we, we we turned we turned Jeff Gammon on and he joined the group. So did Dave Hamilton. So we got you got yeah. you got two two of our guys in oh, in, no. the, in the group, and yeah, yeah they uh, they they do post some stuff and of course <laughs> our, our, our wonderful friend guy Cyril is always there very active in there as well as uh, back to the future live uh, cast that we had uh, a crazy time yesterday because guy decided to be crazy and play with his equipment like he always does he played so. with his new toy during the show yeah which I had the same toy but we won't get into that <laughs> So uh, or, I really appreciate yeah, everybody la, la, listening. La, 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 yeah, la, 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 exactly. Are we still recording? <laughs> we still, we're still recording. No, yes. and, and we're not going to talk anymore. We love you, guy. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate everybody uh, listening. I really appreciate everybody being here. I hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk again soon. Mm -hmm.